Turkey is giving in for the moment and announces that it will initially forego research trips in Greek waters. However, this does not solve the complicated conflict. There were scary scenes that took place in the Aegean more than a week ago. 15 warships and the research ship Orukreis sailed out of Turkish naval ports and set course for Greek waters. A major alarm followed in the Greek Navy, which also sent ships. Fighter planes rose in both Greece and Turkey and even the Greek army on the mainland hundreds of kilometers away is put on alert. For a moment it looked as if there could be a direct military confrontation between the two NATO countries. Just over a week later the situation has calmed down considerably. Let's be constructive and put it off for a while, said Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan last week. This is a good decision, said Greek government spokesman Stelios Petsas. Defense Ministry Circles in Athens said that Turkey had withdrawn most of its warship from the region. Most Greek ships have also returned to their bases. But the conflict is not resolved, at best postponed. What is it about? The history of relations between the two countries is riddled with wars, conflicts and tensions. Most recently, Turkish and Greek warships faced each other in 1996. The then US President Bill Clinton is said to have telephoned all night to relax the situation. The trigger at the time was Banal. A Turkish civilian had raised the Turkish flag on an uninhabited 4 hectare island. On the other hand, if you look at the subject of the current debate, you can guess what dangerous potential the conflict could develop this time. Because it is about much more than an unresolved territorial dispute over an uninhabited island. The research ship Orogreis was to investigate possible gas deposits on behalf of the Turkish government. A huge treasure is stored under the seabed of the region. In 2010, the USGS Geological Service estimated the size of gas deposits in the eastern Mediterranean, also known as the Levantine Sea, at a staggering 30,000 cubic kilometers. That would be enough to supply a country like Germany with gas for around 40 years. And Erdogan made it very clear at the beginning of the year how he wanted to deal with these deposits. Turkey will not wait long to exercise its right to search for gas in the eastern Mediterranean, he said on January 16. He created the right to which he refers earlier, by the way. He had signed an agreement with the United Nations government in Libya that claimed Turkey's territory, which is clearly part of Greece under international law. Inhabited or inhabitable islands of a country are entitled to an exclusive economic zone of 200 nautical miles according to the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. That's the same law why the British are claiming their fishing grounds as their waters. That is the law and the same applies here for Greece. For the Greek island of Kastelorizo, off the coast of which the Orogreis wanted to search for gas last week, Ankara no longer appears to recognize this UN agreement but is relying on the contract with Libya. The island was only 3 kilometers from the Turkish mainland but more than 500 kilometers from Athens, recently argued the Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlüt Cavusoglu. Nevertheless, Athens and the island claim 200 nautical miles as the exclusive economic zone at the expense of Turkey. Cavusoglu spokesman Hamil Akshoy made it clear last week that the island of Castellorizzo in the Mediterranean could not take up an area of 40,000 square kilometers. The originally Greek islands in the Aegean and Greek parts of today's Turkey were once conquered by the Ottoman Empire. The islands then fell back to Greece after the end of the First World War and at the latest with the end of the Great Empire. Since then, Athens has claimed corresponding economic zones around the islands, which includes the exploitation of natural resources. From Turkey's perspective, however, Greece is only entitled to sovereign waters of 12 or 6 nautical miles wide. The doctrine of Mabi Vatan in English, Blue Fatherland, even defines a 200 km wide strip around Turkey as a Turkish zone of influence. But this is only a point of contention between the two states that makes the conflict so explosive. Another aspect is the still unresolved situation in Cyprus. After Greek putschists wanted to connect the Republic of Cyprus to Greece in 1974, Turkish troops occupied the north of the island. After blood battles with hundreds of deaths, the island was divided. In 1984 the north split off and proclaimed its own republic. All attempts to unite Cyprus have failed in the past 56 years since the end of the bloody war. And since then the boundaries that are important for natural gas drilling have also not been clarified. The Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is only recognized by Turkey. 
It is occupied territory for the rest of the world community. Accordingly, the Republic of Cyprus is claiming an economic zone around the entire island. Northern Cyprus, but above all Turkey, sees it differently. From Ankara's perspective, the waters on the north coast of the island belong to Northern Cyprus, which would allow Ankara allies to gas or oil drilling at any time. The situation is also stuck because the Greek part of the island is not very willing to compromise. A diplomatic push from Brussels to allow North Cyprus to generate gas revenues was rejected by the South. There is also a dispute because other neighboring countries do not want to work with Ankara. The largest gas deposits in the eastern Mediterranean are in the Levant Basin between Cyprus and Israel. The governments of the two countries have agreed with Egypt and Greece to jointly exploit the gas fields. Turkey is deliberately left out. All four countries do not have good relations with Ankara. All these points of conflict put a strain on Greek-Turkish relations, which since the independence of Greece from the Ottoman Empire in 1830 have mostly been characterized by conflicts and rarely by reconciliation. The situation is particularly delicate that both Greece and Turkey are members of NATO. How the alliance deals with an attack among its members is unpredictable. Article 5 of the text of the contract, which defines the case of defense, does not differentiate between an attacker inside or outside NATO. And there is no promising mediator in sight. The US stays out of it and also takes contradictory positions. Washington is supporting Turkey in the conflict over Libya to hold back Russians' influence. In the gas dispute, however, the United States is behind Greece, Cyprus, Egypt and especially Israel. And whether Angela Merkel can moderate permanently is also very uncertain. Because in case of doubt, she will choose the European Union, and that means Greece. And if you now want to know more about European politics from a German point of view, YouTube has chosen another of my videos right here for you in the end screen, right next to your chance to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next video. Click and enjoy. Viel Spaß!